Welcome to episode two of the Leading Games podcast. I'm Jason. Set up. Oh, and Enun- enunciate. And enunciate, and you're Breck. Yeah. Hi, I'm Breck. Good morning. <laughs> so, what are we going to talk about today? Uh, howdy doody. Howdy doody is our key thing, yep. We're, what does that mean? It means how. Howdy. How are you? Um, we've had a good day so far. <laughs> Half asleep. It but is currently, what, 9.30 in the morning? I have had a good day so far, actually. Yeah. On my way in, it was nice and sunny, and I got to see a mother duck going along by the river with <laughs> baby, baby ducks. ducks. Fair enough. That's maybe why I was a wee bit late, because I was... Too busy what? watching Follow, the you ducks. Got, you got in line and started following with them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we were tired, because last night we were here till... We were in the shop till about, what, 12 o'clock, playing Kingdom Death Monster? Yeah... Although I was pretty victorious last night. You were, you were superbly victorious. Um, I feel that, as much as I love the game, that did feel like it dragged near the end a wee bit. It's because we played it a long time. Yeah, we, were we played like three monsters. Six hours? No, more than that. It was, what, seven hours? Yeah, seven hours were at that. Five till twelve. Mm, yeah. Yeah, no. we played against three monsters. Yeah, well, we did what? The lion. The butcher. The butcher. And, and the gregalope. Oh. The Greg, Gregalope, yeah. The old Gregalope. I'm old Gregalope. <laughs> it definitely has a mangina underneath. It's scary. Um, but we did, we were pretty successful actually. Um, we managed to get our village fairly on. We lost a lot of people on the way. Um, we didn't lose anybody last night. Yeah, we did. did well, we? not not on not in the hunts, but in the village. We lost two to the plague. Uh, we lost, uh, who else? Um, we lost a few to love making. That was last time. No, that was tonight. Last night. So, yeah, we, we lost, lost more. Yeah, we lost the wifey and her uh, her, her baby. Uh, they. I was just bas- basking it. in my victories. So. <laughs> it seems to be we've lost more people true, procreating true sex, than yeah. hunting. You know what I mean? So we might just have to curve that a little. But you need more people. <laughs> yeah. Well, we do. We need to get more um, more uh, survivors to send into the meat grinder. But yeah, but it's good. We're enjoying it though. Um, yeah, it's fun. Five of us, five of us playing. Um, we're now in Lantern Year 6. Yeah. Yep. And I'm doing a write-up on the website, leadinggames.co.uk, the news article section yeah. of our, our Year Lanterns. It's more of a story-driven rather than a... Yeah, like a narrative blog yeah, type of thing. Of, rather than a playthrough, doing it as a third person watching the characters kind of thing. Almost like a god. Not saying I'm a god, but like a god. You're nothing like a god. <laughs> nah, I'm a disgraceful human being. <laughs> so yeah, we've played that. Um... Uh, I've been, I did some videos recorded for Lords of Hell, which was much better format. I feel. Yeah, I like that one. I like that one. Yeah. Um, um, but as I, as I mentioned to you before, putting in like stills. Yeah, we've got to figure out how to. When you're talking about the miniatures, because you're like, oh look at this, this is a really cool miniature, yeah, like, and it's like a yellow dot. Squinting at the screen, yeah. So I fig- I figured out how to do that, so that'll be getting added in hopefully the next one. Um, what else? Got I've got um, company one free elephant are sending me a copy of Awesome to review, so I'll have a look at that. I'll obviously meet them when I'm down at UK Games Expo this year, so um, I'll pick up some stock off them. But yeah, it'd be nice just to get that game in, get it viewed. Um, yeah. Anybody wants to send any games to me, feel free. Yes, yeah, so if anyone has any games to send, send them. We'll review them, we'll look at them. Um, quite happily, at Kickstarters again, we'll, we'll push Kickstarters for people. Um, strangely enough, as much as we're board game based um, on the YouTube channel, we had a company, task, uh, Defence Task Force, um, email us, dropping us a request to review their computer game well, again, Task Force Defense or Defense Task Force. Apologies, I can't quite remember, but it's a tower defense game, so that's okay. been alright. Um, been grinding a couple hours on that. Um, what else? We got I got a Kickstarter through. Um, oh, it's called Gnomes and Associates. I haven't really looked at it yet. Um, I don't ask me. It was one of those, like three o'clock in the morning. What's that? That looks cool. It's got some miniatures. It might be interesting. Click Gnomes click and Associates. Yeah, it's pro. To be honest, it's taken so long. That sounds like there. the worst law firm ever. <laughs> Hello, we're Norms and Associates. How are you? But yeah, no, it's a. Uh, I was a bit, bit disappointed in the time it's taken to get here. The production quality doesn't look great. I've still to open the actual box and see the physical. So hey, it could be good in hand. It might not be. Um, what else? Um, I've kickstarted another game called, and I'm going to have to quickly jump on the screen here called. Go Eco. Um, it looks all right. Uh, it was recommended by a couple of other guys I f- speak to on the the old Twitters um, by Eco Eco Entertainment. 
just looks like a little card game. I really, to be honest, haven't actually looked into the gameplay or anything. It's just because people recommended it and it was so cheap to buy and it like, it's like nine pounds. No, I'm, I'm, I'm never one for, for Kickstarter. It's because I do it all for you, that's why. Um, well, yeah. a couple. Mm, a two, oh yeah, two so far. Two? Yeah, two. Yeah. Uh, but I've seen a little bit of buzz about a game called Villagers. Yes, this is one I have been looking at. I'll quickly show. It's a card game. Villagers. It's like a card game village building. Yeah, I thought that looked quite nice. Yeah, I'm kind of. Uh, there was a trailer that came up on my Facebook feed this morning as well. I'm going to. I believe these guys, um, Fish Games, are going to be at the UK Games Expo. Quite nice, um, nice, clean graphic artwork. It almost looks like. Without being too critical, because I don't know, it looks like Machi Cool. Yeah, I was just thinking that. You've got Machi Cool a few, you've got your money, you've got your obviously building things. Um, I'm good. This is one of my top ten to hit at the UK Games Expo. Actually, um, uh, I probably will back it anyway if I can't. Maybe get a, uh, a demo of it. Press copy, even maybe. Um, I don't hint, mind. Hint. Well, not hint, hint. But I'm, I've one of the things I will say is like with press copies, I don't expect them to send them for free. I will happily pay for them. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, these guys are needing to make money. They're not. Yeah, no, but they 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 will have a certain amount of copies yeah. that they'll send to press to review. Yeah. They won't charge you for that no but I mean I like to show my appreciation if they do then I like um, what you could do uh, I sometimes watch uh, reviews by ACG does uh, video game reviews mm -hmm. and what he does he gets he, get, he usually gets a copy sent to him of whatever video game he's reviewing yeah. but then he will buy a copy and, yeah. and then give that copy away to his patrons oh cool that's a good idea actually yeah. which I think is quite a nice idea that's a good idea um, well that's what um, I mean there's a couple of guys have spoke to about getting preview copies or price copies should say and I've just said to them, look, I appreciate the offer, and um, just let me know what the postage is even, and I'll help with that, because, hey, these guys aren't here to give away free money, you know what I mean? I wouldn't give away free money. No, but the, it's... it's it, uh, and it's very it could, much appreciated, I will say. It could be seen as advertising, so sending a game out, and if, if enough people see your review, like the game, will go out and buy it. Yeah. It, it makes sense. But it's a whole thing, like, there's a argument where people ask artists, oh, can you draw this for me? And artists will say, well, it costs this much, and like... Mm, I'm giving you advertising. I'm helping your portfolio. Yeah, well, exposure. Yeah, yeah, exposure. So what? That's a little bit different. That's it's, a little bit different. It's still time and money. So yeah, I just like to show my appreciation. So, but yeah. So now Villagers is looking good. Um, I'm, I was on top of that. Oh, don't. So, um, was it Thursday? I decided to go with the family. Uh, I was off, so I had off time off work. Um, me and the family decided to we jump out to the beach because it was lovely weather. What beach? Um, out at Ballantor in Scotland. Lovely little beach. Um, I thought it might be in Scotland. Well, just in case we get any international or English or okay. Welsh or visitors. So where's, anyway, where's Ballantour? It's in the Highlands. It's about 30, 40 miles north of Inverness, okay. the capital of the Highlands. Uh, but yes, uh, decided. Uh, it's up near Tain. Yes, yeah. yeah. But I was. Um, I've been watching a Kickstarter. I was like, okay, it's the second time this Kickstarter came on, but I had a bonus game called Vadonan Gardens. The main Kickstarter, which was Vadonan Gardens, also would allow you to repurchase. City of Kings. City of Kings is a game by Frank West at City of King Games, I believe, if I remember right. And I was really interested. Nice, cheap. I'm going to buy it. I spoke to Frank. Um, he says, yeah, yeah, just you can back on the Van Doren Gardens and you can add on the City of Kings later on. So I was like, cool. Um, at the point of speaking to him, I was in the car. So I thought, ah, I'll have plenty of time to get home. No, 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 no. I get home. Check the Facebook. Check the Kickstarter. It's ended tears begin to stream down the face because I am really, really upset. Now, treasured memories with the family at the beach, lovely. But a little resentful I didn't get that City of Kings. So yeah, I was a bit annoyed, so I'm going to... You know, I messaged him and said... <clears throat> I'm going to... Stuck in traffic. I'm going to speak to him. Um, it's not his fault and it's not anybody else, but my own fault for not just doing it there and then, or doing it earlier as I should have. It's the treasured memories. It's the treasured memories. Fault. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I'm hoping to get... A I'm actually hoping to get a demo of it down at UK Games Expo this year because everyone's raving about it. It's got that. Um, so, so, well, I was listening to an interview with Frank, and it's got a bit of an MMO feel, um, like World of Warcraft style, okay. where someone's a tank, someone's a healer. This is a board game, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it's, but it's nice. The only thing it. So, you don't mean like a MOBA? No, no. Uh, MMO. An MMO. Yes. You've got characters take on different people. Um, it's It just looks really good. I. One thing I don't like, obviously, because I'm a stickler for them, is um, it doesn't have... Well, it does, but you have to purchase them extra. It's miniatures for um, for the game. Now, I'm all for miniatures in a game, but miniatures make the cost go up. Yeah, so I can yeah. see why they've done standees with that expansion of adding the miniatures on later on. 
So where are we? So as you can see, which obviously the viewer or listeners won't see, is it's got like maps. And um, you get your characters, and your characters level up. But you kind of, I believe there was like. Um, so that looks like basically a sort of modular board where they. It move is a modular on, board, yeah. I and you have your own character sheet. Yeah, you got loads of tiles and stuff. Um, you get your own card. You got a custom dice. Look, look nice. Custom dice uh, are always nice. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know if I'll show you. Uh, there was something about that. I think it was a book goes with it. That tells a story, and each part of the story will set up a different map. And your a lot of games are going with a book that tells a story these days. Well, what's it? Arabian Nights. KDN. KDN. Yeah. Well, that Arabian Nights basically that is the game. The yeah, book, but you know, that's a good version. But yeah, I th I like that kind of feel though. That book and game. Um, yeah. I like campaigns. I mean, we got what Vampire Hunters, the Kickstarter from Dark Gate Games. The it's got a campaign at the back. It doesn't have one downside. It doesn't have a tutorial, which is a bit annoying. Um, it explains the game fairly well. We only refer to the book what maybe five or six times in our first playthrough, which uh, I feel is an accomplishment if you don't have to review it so much. Um, but yeah, the the whole book narrative thing. I've seen that a few times popping up. Some places getting comics to go with their books. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Um, I one I am looking forward to coming to Kickstarter is. It's called Dobbers Quest for the Key. Dobbers. Uh, yeah, it's from America. So obviously they're unaware that in our lovely country, <coughs> Dobbers means something different than what they probably a think it means. Uh, reprobate or something like that. Whereas over there, uh, and the guy explained it, uh, I can't mind his name, he explained that basically it is a term of endearment. Really? Yeah, over there. So it's quite. Well, it sort of is in Scotland. Most most insults yeah. are terms of endearment. I mean, in you Scotland. can use the c word in Scotland. It's still a, a yeah. compliment. You know what I mean? So I yeah, guess. it's something I would call my mum. You know, <laughs> a dauber. Like, how's it going, dauber? He's honours you, dauber. <laughs> so yeah, there's that. Um, I feel I feel it's gonna be a good wee game. Uh, it's it's got a wee bit of they're like hobbits or something and it's got a story mode to go with it the dobbers are hobbits yeah they're like little hobbit people that live in the forest sort of thing they're kind of like noddy um, gnome type thing gnome slash hobbits yeah I don't know what noddy is noddy the cartoon no I know what noddy is but I don't know what he is oh no I, I'm like, he's some sort of is elf thing or something pixie or a he's like a pixie elf or something yeah something it's a mountie. I'm so bad at that so um, but yeah what I, what I did here is that his plan is to do dobbers quest for the key is the first game and then that's a sort of kind of like a dobber's quest for honours. Yeah, if I remember right, it's like um, you've got deck building almost, so you can collect some cards, but then you can take that when it's somebody else's turn. Mm -hmm. So you can screw them over. But he's going to do a second game, which I believe, if I remember right, you're saying is more of a no, probably wrong with like a work worker placement, but it continues the story in the saga. Okay. So he's going to do a few in that range. Um. So yeah, there's that. Um, what else we got? Well, I think that's most of my Kickstarters at the moment. I'm kind of I'm Kickstarter daft at the moment, which I probably shouldn't be considering. You say at the moment, but since I've known yeah. you, you've been. I mean, I've way only. Kickstarter. What's it say? It doesn't tell me how many I've com completed so far, so that's not too bad. So I don't get to that shame. But I've got a few coming. Um, Rebels of Ravenport, Deckbox Dungeon, Unbroken. Look forward to them. A solo game. Solo games become very popular at the moment. I have noticed. Um, solo games in a lot of things at the moment. Um, I mean, Lords of Hela and Broken. I believe there's a solo version of Terraforming Mars. Well, like a, an add on to I the don't main know, game. Because I've like... seen someone commenting last night on Twitter saying, played two games solo of. Uh, had a solo board game night, played two games of Terraforming Mars. Now, I didn't realise. No, isn't, isn't there a solo variant in the game? I is think there? there's a solo variant in the game. There is, yeah. yeah. I was wondering because I wasn't too sure. Yeah, so. I think at the back of the, the rule book it talks about solo variants. Well, that'd be quite good because. Um, I'm all for a solo game because I don't get much time to play board games nowadays. So I've been able to just throw it up, quick game. But again, I mean, you got a solo variant in Dark Souls, but that's not a, I'll just throw that up, play 20 minutes, put it away. That's a, all right, everybody at the house, I'm going to sit here and cry a little. So yeah, um, what else have we got? I mean, that's board game wise. What, oh, today you've got the board game club. Yeah, we've got board game club today. Um, uh, Layla's going to be bringing in Mansions of Madness. Yep, that's her and Iona are going to play that one. Um, I've got Olympus with me, which I haven't played before. No. Uh, which looks like a sort of interesting Euro type game. Oh, right, okay. Based on uh, Greek city states. Okay. Uh, you send your priests out to worship the gods, who then give you favors and a sort of worker placement like mechanic. Mad for worker placement. <coughs> uh, um, but other like you could you send your priest out, and then other people can then. Join you, 
No, no, okay. And the ceremony. Um, but who, if if you're the one that started the ceremony, you you get a better benefit, you benefit, benefit than the other okay. one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then you build up your city state. You so you build buildings and um, uh, develop your tracks and stuff. Nice military and population mm. culture. That That's sort of thing. Cool. Uh, it seems quite a simple type of game when it comes down to it, but it looks like it has some hidden depths. I'm looking forward to, to giving it a go. Nice, and we're also going to be playing Fog of War, the abstract tank game. Uh, from yeah, uh, Cubicle Games. Cubicle Games. He Gavin hand, Burnham. He hand makes everything, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. He he he'll be down at Could the expo, I would yeah, imagine. Definitely. He was there the last two years. Yeah. Uh, he'll probably have a, a new game to show off. Yes, because I went, last year I tried to get Fog of War and he didn't have any, yeah. which was a little getting. But um, no, but we're gonna give that a shot because obviously I would like to review that and I like, quite enjoy it because it's just an FTV abstract tank attack. Yeah, and the the, it's, the board is basically a block of wood that's <laughs> been to laser etched, I think. Maybe. Yeah, 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 um, lasered, and it's got some a laser cut. Laser cut. And how many tanks it got? It's got like oh, there's, twelve each. Yeah, there's a, a handful of tanks. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the different colours as well, which is nice. Nice little small handmade tanks. Yeah, and they're gonna be numbers on the bottom, so yeah. it also plays in the game. But um, what else we got? Um, I'm going to take. My wife uh, has been doing puzzles at the moment. So puzzles? She's, yeah, just doing puzzles. So she's what also. Sort of puzzles? Like uh, crosswords? No, like Disney, like jigsaws. jigsaws oh, jigsaws. jigsaws. Sorry, jigsaws. Yeah. So, um, so she's off the telly, which is nice. So she's been a bit more relaxed. So we're going to sit and we're going to. I'm going to take home Carcassonne. I'm going to take Seven Wonders Jewel tonight to play with her. Mm. Because obviously we're going to be recording them. So just give me a wee fresher. Yeah. She's been quite good at picking up her game. She likes Machi. She's mad for Machikoro. She loves Machikoro, but. She doesn't like that I can beat her, <laughs> because I obviously know the strategy mm. and the plans. Then you've got, she likes Mintworks, which is really good. Yeah, nice little tiny, <coughs> tiny, oh, tiny little totally we get. Um, worker placement game. Yeah, it's a, but it's also the Mintworks guy. I think in. I can fit it, the whole game in my mouth. Yeah, you probably could. Mm, I might test that, actually. <laughs> I'll probably ask the wife to watch me while I test that, just in case I choke, but yeah, I'm going to give it a shot. Um, don't do that at home. I please don't do that at home. Um, I'm stupid. That's okay. Um, we I can I can corroborate concur. that. I yeah. will concur, sir. <laughs> As Norms and Associates uh, firm says, <laughs> we concur. <laughs> so yeah, um, we've got yeah, um, it works. She likes that one, and we tried her with them. Um, she's oh, we're playing. Uh, what did we play? We played mint works, and I says to her, "How are you getting on?" She's like, "I'd like something more taxing, something more strategic and more brain." Th-. I'm like, "Okay." Onatama. Onatama's a nice, easy game. Yeah. Light game. No, 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 no. The wife is not taking this well. So we play a few games. What do you mean she's not taking it well? Well, uh, it was, so we started playing. Um, she's She's got the gist of the game. She's doing all right. Yeah, it's, it's like, quick explanation. You should be able to pick up the game. You'd think. I get her to a point, right? She's looking at the board. I'm like, you're right. She's like, I don't know what to do. I'm like, okay. Well, what I'll do is I'll give you time. I'll step away from the table so I'm not interrupting you and getting annoyed at analysis paralysis, obviously, because I'm sick of that. So I go down, I sit at the couch, I flick a telly on, I put an episode of The Simpsons on. The episode of Simpsons finishes. I start an episode of Family Guy. Do people still watch The Simpsons? Yeah, it's only like, like series like 900 or something. But yeah, put an episode of Family Guy. Get halfway through Family Guy. So this is 45 minutes in. She's like, I've got it. I go up. <laughs> yeah, 45 minutes go up. She makes the move. I'm like, you can't do that. <laughs> she's read the card backwards, isn't she? <laughs> so she's like, oh, I don't know if I'll do that. So I'm like... All right, so why not just do the opposite side? I can't. Okay, uh, what do you want to do? She's like, give me a few more minutes. So back to the couch I go. Finish the episode of Family Guy. She's, I got it. Lo and behold, she did, and she won. But nearly an hour to make a move was yeah. pretty intense. So she what? She got to the end. She's like, I don't like that one very much. I'm like, mm, it's not that you don't like it. It's that you're bad at it. So the thing I like about On Tama is it's it's fast. <clears throat> yeah, I find it very fast. I find it very like. Five minutes, ten minutes again. Because I've, I've never been a fan of re- abstract strategies, really. I mean, chess, uh, drafts, that sort of thing, or checkers if I you're love in America. Chess. I just, I mean, I know how to play it, but it, uh, it takes too long and it just, I just get a bit dull. No, I love chess. Chess has just got the mind going because I can plan like ten moves ahead. But I like, I like Onitama because it's, it, it's fast and it, it moves quickly and it's just, uh, there's something about it that I really like. Yeah, honestly, that was good. Um, well, that was one of the ones um, picked up the UK Games Expo 2000. Yeah, me, me too. 16. 
Um, yeah, yeah, 16. You, yeah. We all picked up. In fact, you got it. I got it. And Chris got uh, it. And last year, I picked up uh, the expansions. expansion. Yeah, I didn't get the expansion. Um, I'm happy with it, just the base game as it is. Well, the, the expansion is just extra cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just but mixes it up a bit. There's enough cards in there that I've had enough variation to make a difference. So, but yeah, uh, that was a good one. We picked that up. Um, do you know what? See if I get to UK Games Expo and Mike's Mike Nudd's not there. And I'll be upset because I want to ask him what's happening with Lava Run. We we checked this out last year and it's doing my head in because it seems to have been put on the back burner. And I don't know why because the game we looked at it was almost at point of production. And I haven't a clue what's going on. So I'll be having a chat with Mike about that one. I don't know that one. Uh, I can show you a video. Um, we played it with Care and Chris and we actually played with Mike himself and it was pretty decent. Um, little move your guy into the middle, steal some treasure, get out. But as you move over a hex, the hex cracks and then after so many cracks you die. You fall right. um, what was it a little bit like hey that's my fish uh, almost yeah but except for you're trying to get you go from the edge of the board to the middle grab some treasure and you've got to get it out to your, your zone right. but each tile has one but the mechanic treasure. where you move off the tile yeah, it changes check the tile so that's pretty cool um, but yeah I want to find out what's going on but I, I guess they're busy with Dice Hospital and they've just released uh, okay so this is this is where it gets interesting um, Mike if I remember right works for Break Crack Games Add for oh, Back Alley Cat is it? No oh crap it's very rude of me I can't remember the name now um, it's the one that's pr producing Dice Hospital Dice Hospital Hospital um, Alley Cat Games there we go god damn it so I believe he works for both sides um, but yes uh, I'm going to find out what they're getting up to um, see what they're doing I'm also going to meet Bez, who is in the process of catastrophe. So hopefully that'll be a good game to look at. Is it cata no cataclysm? Which looks like a it looks like I take that game. So okay. we'll, we'll check that out. I'm going to head round to who else? Who else is on my hit list? Um, hopefully Mark McKinnon from Wreck and Rune is going to be there. Um, I don't know if he's actually displaying or not this year, um, but he's obviously his Kickstarter is due to kick off. I believe. The week, or the the week that UK Games Expo is so starts that week, runs into UK Games Expo and finishes up. And um, what else we got planned? I'm going to be going to Play Fusion to check out their. So obviously, I play Light Seekers, which is from Play Fusion, mm -hmm. lovely trading card game. Um, there's a lovely word again. God damn it. Um, great trading card game. I'm actually going to competition for. They've produced a Warhammer Age of Sigmar version, which really? yeah, I'm kind of. To be truthful, I'm a little peed off. Um, right. A little pissed off at them because, well, basically. It's not just a reskinning, just for people who like Warhammer. Yes, it looks like a reskinning, which makes me wonder is it going to take. Is it going to distract from the main light I, game? No, I, I wouldn't have thought so. I, I think they've probably just done it to encourage more players in who might not normally play that type of game. So, Into the trading card genre, sort of thing. Yeah, like uh, people who like Warhammer, um, like miniatures yeah. uh, based games. Uh, just, just to maybe introduce some of those. I can see that point, but I'm kind of like I don't think it'll detract. I've got mad love for light seekers at the moment, so I'm, I'm kind of like I know they've got the next. I think it's next set or two sets prepared, or they are in the finishing touches of, I believe. Um, so I don't want to lose. I want light seekers to keep going because me and all the Scottish stores have been pushing it to the point where they had the Scottish regionals at the start of the year, but we managed to convince them to have another one in a week's time on the 26th of May. So, oh yeah, you can do it, Pat. So going to that, if I'm successful in top eight that, then I get to qualify for nationals, which frees up my Friday at UK's Are you good? I'm in our local, man. I'm very good, yes. I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm, I've never I've never played I'm it. I'm almost the top dog, near enough. I mean, on the rankings on the player base um, for the website, I'm not, but that's because... I haven't played as many games as a lot of people, but hmm. yeah, I mean, I'm 14th in the world, technically, so... 14th in the world? Yeah. I mean, that's that's alright. I was 8th, and I've dropped because more and more people have climbed the board because they're doing more events, but still. Yeah. But then you probably don't get to play as much as... I don't know, because of the store, yeah. and like, but I do try to grind games as much as possible, so hopefully I'll go to this tournament, and even a top 8 would be nice, freeze up my Friday at Expo, and that means we've got a lot of time to do stuff. Um, we are actually... Um, demoing our game R, yes. at the expo. Have we got a name for the game? I think it's Worlds Without. We're, oh, Worlds Without. Okay, is that the, is that just that was the it, the theme was a world without. <laughs> but I think, uh, I think Layla said that, uh, that called just called Worlds Without. Yeah. I think that's what we sort of ended on. Um, it's a nice. But yeah, we're we're we're, t we're taking that game down. We won the Murray Game Jam with the this this game, uh, and let's clarify. 
So this year you won. Yeah. Last year you came second. Yeah. Which shows great consistency in designing, and people are quite fond of your game. Well, the games are quite different though. Yeah, but it? even still. Uh, but we're taking it down to the expo to demo, and we're demoing it on Friday afternoon and Saturday afternoon. Good, good. And have you spoke to any publishers or anything like that yet? Uh, no. I believe I've sent some links to Leila because there's a couple of guys looking for. Um, I believe Ali Cart Games, in fact, are actually open to pitches. Um, there was another company that's open to pitches. The ones that um, help publish Temp Work Assassin. Temp Worker Assassin. Yeah, yeah. They're looking for pitches. I mean, but then obviously the whole the whole thing down there is about pitching games, finding information. So, yeah, we did discuss self publishing, but it's not an easy job. It's a lot of work and a lot of hassle. Um, uh, especially if you haven't done it before, I would have yeah, thought. Yeah, you're kind of, you're, you're I think if, if I was trying to get something published, I'd try, I would try to get an established publisher on board. Yes, I would too. Who, could, I mean, who, who has experience and... Um, knows what changes to make, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Knows, knows how to, like, to make it look nice. And, yeah. I mean, I've played the game. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's you're basically building a world, effectively. Um, yeah, diff- different players play different alien races who um, are trying to develop yeah, their planet, diff- yeah. terraform the world. It was, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Each each has their own little planet, and you have to terraform, and you can uh, you can sort of attack other people's planets, um, uh, but then you can develop shields and stuff. Yep, and then you've got, but it's kind of like a hidden hidden choice game because you've got your little shield that hides your your board. And you're going to select whether you're going to mine for resources, you're going to recycle resources, you're going to build something. Yeah, there's a little bit of worker placement aspect yeah, to it. Yeah, um, yeah, it work. But work. I mean, it was, it was a game that was designed in 48 hours. Yeah, well, that's it. But it, so, surprisingly, like I'm good at picking out flaws in games. I mean, I'm really good at picking out. But the flaws, there was not major flaws in that game um, so far. I mean, I've only played it, what, three times now? So I need to play it more to get the right feel into it. But yeah, there's some obviously a bit of you've got your research mechanic um, so each turn you develop a new technology and that gives you the shield or lets you duplicate your yeah. action stuff. so they're quite cool so obviously there's room for extra add-ons and stuff like that um, and the carters I like the carters because there's the, the Jason invaders <laughs> mm-hmm. lovely line maimed people and um, then there's the the M1K3 bot there's obviously the cra- the crazy monster cra- um, so yeah that's looking good but I hope I mean I think you guys should keep pushing you obviously you guys are a bit me, but I think you should go for it. Well, I just, Obviously, I mean, not. Layla's really busy, and I, I myself, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm just learning to code all the time, really. Yeah. And obviously, like, I try to help as much as I can, but between all I've got now, I've got YouTube, Twitter, podcast, articles, shop, family, so stretched every way thin, but we're getting there. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, I'm really looking forward to the to going down to the expo. I am. I'm very excited. Um, this is the first year that um, I'm I'm planning. I've got a, a schedule set out where I want to go, what I want to see. I mean, you guys kind of you guys aren't really there to do more. You're more there for the fun side of it. Yeah, but I mean, I'm happy. Uh, like, if you want to time to do something, check out something, get a review for it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm down there for well, I'm down there for everything. I'm down there to. Play in competitions, check out new games, review games, um, and even sort of make business contacts for getting supply and stock. So yeah, there's that. Yeah, and aren't you uh, planning meeting up with some of the other Scottish yeah. podcasters down there? We were on Twitter. We were chatting. There's a few of us. Um, Ian McCall, oh, Ian McAllister from the Giant Brain. Giant Brain. Yeah. I'm gonna be wrong here. I don't know if it's Ian McAllister. Two points. Oh, I think it is Ian McAllister. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think Mark McKinnon from Wreck and Ruin. I think Ben and Charlotte from Unlucky Frog, Unlucky Frog Gaming podcast. Um, they're all talking about having a meet up. <clears throat> we were going to go for first. It was suggested some drinks. Then it suggested a meal and drinks. And then I says, well, I personally said, why don't we have to play a game since that's what we're there for? Yeah. And then it was brought up that we're going to someone's going to bring Mafia de Cuba, which I do like. A very Mafia good game. de Cuba is a very fun um, game. And if there's going to be enough of us, then well, that plays up to what? How many players? Like 10, 12? Yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, so this should be enough for us. So I'm looking forward to meeting these guys because, again, I listen to their podcasts every day. Yeah. Non stop, and you're just getting into them now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got the, downloaded the Podbean app and uh, I'm, yeah, I'm slowly working through some episodes. Yeah, so let's just quickly say there's the Unlucky Frog podcast, uh, Unlucky Frog Gaming, there is the Giant Brain, there is 
Also, Richard's not going to be there from We're Not Wizards, but listen to him. Um, there's a podcast, it's not really, it's not solely games, but it's a really good one called the Stain In Podcast. Um, it's just four guys just talking nonsense. Pete always has... Oh, I think you just tweeted about them. Yeah, because Pete is just like, they just bully Pete and it's a shame, but it's funny. And I've not yet listened to an episode where I'm giggling my nut off at them just winding them up. So yeah, but yeah, there's that's my four hits at the moment. I'm just constantly, every episode in the years, on the go. Makes my commute a pleasant journey. So yeah, so I'll give them a shout out. Hopefully check them out on Podbean or iTunes or wherever you get your podcast from. Uh, wherever you're getting us from, basically, yes. We're yeah. Elidium Games is the, the number one. Yeah. Not yet, but we the, the number one something. Something. I don't know if the number one podcast. Number one idiots. Quite possibly. Yeah. Two blethering nudders. So, uh, aside from board games, what what else have you been... What else have I been doing? Um, just finished Lost in Space. Nice. We yeah. are still working through, so no spoilers. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I see how they fi- finished it up. Um, what else? We have actually missed a few... Uh, Weekends are watching TV, so we're we're quite behind. Oh, I'll catch up. Oh, yeah, because you're watching what? Oh no, you did say you started watching um, Archer, the new season. Oh yeah, and yeah. You've, you're intrigued because apparently Pam. Pam, Pam, Pam I, looks, I love Pam. Pam's amazing, but you I, say I, she I, looks I like am, a monster. I am complete. No, she doesn't look like she's just bigger than everybody. They, uh, she, they've done something with the proportions scaling. of Pam compared to everybody yeah. else, and she's. <laughs> She's even sexier than she normally is. <laughs> she's a sexy woman. Oh, she's got she's some amazing. power behind her. You wouldn't mess with her. No, I mean, just just when I, I, there's only one word that comes to mind when I think of Pam. Sploosh. Sploosh. What's it? I could drown a toddler in my pants right now. <laughs> she's amazing. Uh, but yeah, so um, obviously Noir was the last one. Um, it ended. It, Noir wasn't that great in my eyes. Uh, I, I enjoyed it. It yeah, was I more like of an Archer, homage, but, I think. Um, it's it's yeah, I think it was the probably the weakest uh, of of all of the series. See, so but yeah, far. I think it was more of an homage to the gentleman that um, voiced uh, Woodhouse. Yeah. Um, which is going to be sad because I quite liked the interaction of uh, Archer and Woodhouse because that was some of my favorite parts. But this new series, Danger Island, is is quite strange in a lot of respects. Right, okay. Um, spoilers to anybody who hasn't seen it, but not really spoiler story wise. Yeah. Uh, the characters are quite different because right. in the previous series the characters have always been who they are, they are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in this like Archer is Archer and his mother is his mother Mallory. and Pam's Pam right. but the rest of them aren't quite there really who they are before mm-hmm. I mean the characters are sort of the same Feel like does it feel like the writers might be hamming it in a little no no no, no. no okay. it's, it's, it's like uh, Cyril is suddenly Confident. a German guy a German guy? Yep. Oh, okay. And um, where's Krieger then? He's a parrot called Crackers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's going to be beautiful. <laughs> parrot. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, that's going to be interesting. Uh, I guess um, where, it's on. It's not on any show. It's on Showbox at the moment. Which yeah, yeah. Oh, so yeah I mean, a great you'll be able to find it here yeah. and there. Um, uh, normally, no, I would watch it on my Skybox, but it'll probably not be on Skybox till the end of the year or something. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, uh, um, so, um, well, I've watched the Deadpool two movie. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, my opinion is very good. Yes. Um, obviously, I'm a Deadpool fan, so I'm going to be biased. You're very much a Deadpool I fan. Mean, I don't think that I've known anybody who's as much of a Deadpool fan as you are. To call their son Wade Wilson, to call their son Wade Wilson, nails it there. You yeah. know what I mean? Can't argue with that. So, um, yeah, the movie was good. It was. It's. It had a bit more of a serious tone to the, than the last one. That's okay though. But it it, it developed developed the world or Deadpool's universe because even though now Disney have bought Fox over, he's not quite into the Marvel universe. But there are references back and forth. Yeah, but <clears throat> I could see why they might want to s- s- to keep him slightly separate because he's a brute. Yeah, I mean they might want to interject here and there, but I think they might want to keep him. Yeah. Slightly um, separate. Obviously, they introduce and um, it's not really a spoiler because all of the trailers Cable. Who's the time traveler? Um, the reasoning behind it is quite interesting. That might be a spoiler. No, if they don't know if they, if they don't know Cable's a time traveler, then well, I didn't know that. They should be able to watch. Well, don't watch it. De- it's Deadpool and Cable. Deadpool and Cable are like the the two main characters of the Deadpool universe. I've never. I've only ever seen the film. Oh, jeez. We'll get some books and start reading. No, I mean I'm not. I'm not into um, superhero comic books that much. Yeah. Uh, I was always into say, indie comics. Oh, okay. But no, Deadpool Cable's the main guy. Um, but you go through it and like they introduce some characters. So 
There's some parts in it. There's a couple of cards introduced, which I feel a bloody waste of time, basically. Yeah. Um, they were just there for comedic value, which, fair enough, that's fine. Uh, then there was the laughs were there, but they weren't as intense as the first one, and I feel that's the sequel sequel syndrome. Well, it might be because the first one was fresh, like like it, the fourth wall breaks it, were early. It, it, it was it was unheard of to do like an R rated um, comic movie. Yeah, yeah. but um, and, and, all, and they didn't expect it so to do as well. So they they were just like, yeah, let's just do whatever. And it weren't. I mean, I'll give it its juice. It's a very good game. I, I game, sorry, film, and I do like it. It's um, <clears throat> it's just some of the humor wasn't quite there for me. Um, but I enjoyed it. Uh, yeah. What else? Um, there's a uh, Ready Player One. Uh, I've seen that. I haven't finished it yet. I am watching it through uh, now, different means to normal human. I read the book. Yes. And I watched the film. Now I believe the and references in the book and the film are different. Oh yeah, they're, they're trying to modernize um, it. Not even just the references, the uh, parts of the main story are different. I mean, the, the, the broad strokes are there, yeah. but there's a lot of um, the story that they've changed, which makes sense. I, I enjoyed it, I, I enjoyed the book, I enjoyed the film. Uh, it's just basically a reference fest, really. Yeah. Uh, what I didn't like about the film was they cut out the whole rush bit and they just done like the reference Rush in a little poster Rush the seminal Canadian rock band Rush nah okay <laughs> well your disappointment sorry I guess that's what I'm reviewing uh, uh, not reviewing checking out this afternoon then Rush I'll be putting Rush on the old speakers when we're playing games okay we love a bit of Rush so I know I'm not I'm only halfway through the movie um, I, I'm watching it through so what would uh, no, I'll not ask where you got up to because of spoilers. Uh, I mean, I got up to the. I can spoiler free. I got up to the point where. How many keys? So far, one. Okay. But the last part I watched was where there was a dancing. And ah, yeah, anti, yeah, yeah. anti-gravity dancing. Yeah. So that's where I okay. got to. Okay. Okay. Um, which is interesting. Um, so I'm. Do you know what? I don't know anything about the book other than what I've heard in reviews, and I don't know anything about the film other than what I've seen so far. I'm enjoying it. It's just. No, a, it's it's fun. It's a watch film. Now, uh, Layla, my partner Layla, she really didn't like the book. Yeah. Um, and she's a voracious reader. <laughs> um, she's a writer too. And writer. So that's um, why. She really didn't enjoy the book, but she watched the film with me and she loved the film. Huh. Well, she liked the film. I don't know. I, that's common I don't want though. to put words in her mouth. That's common though, because like, look at example Lord of the Rings. Some people are like, oh, the books are amazing, but the films are crap. And some people think the the films I are love both. Books, you know I, I'm a yeah. big Lord of the Rings fan. I love the I love the books. I love the films. I understand the changes that were made for the films, uh, and it works. I mean, I'm obviously the Hobbit's a bit bloated, mind. So I don't like the movie of the Hobbit. Um, the Hobbit movies, meh. I could do without. Where's the book? I love the book because I read that when I was younger. But yeah. yeah, I read that when I was like nine years old. Yeah, I think I must have been ten or eleven. Yeah, I was in high school when I read it. But yeah, so I am. Also, seen nothing else at the moment really. Um, obviously you've got. Um, solo the movie coming out which you're not quite looking forward to no I'm not looking forward to that at all I mean <laughs> there hasn't been a good Star Wars film since Rogue One Empire Strikes Back oh well Rogue One was good mm. Mm, Rogue One was good no yeah. it really wasn't Jedi was my favourite <laughs> what The Last Jedi yeah. not Return of the Jedi no Return of the Jedi Return of the Jedi I like that's that your favourite one well that's because when I first watched it I was like 6 so that no, whole... I mean, Return of the Jedi is alright uh it's not how I would have made no, it. No, no. Teddy Bears was a bit daft. Han Solo would have died in that movie oh, yeah, if yeah. I had made it. He should have died in that movie. Yeah. I believe he was penciled in to die, was he not? Quite possibly. Uh, and, yeah. After the, that, they just... The died. Rebel should have won, but they should have been decimated. Yeah, yeah. There should have been just scraps and left. But yeah. Then, and then, just Luke just uh, walks off into the sunset, a broken Jedi. Yeah. A broken husk well, of a man. Well, he does. He does. Well, no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. He oh, cuddles no. up with his, his That's what he does, family yeah. and yeah. gives a wink to like his his ghost pals. That's uh, I forgot about that part. Yeah. Oh, okay, now I'm annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid Star Wars. Yeah, the last two. Um, what the last Jedi on? Which other See, one? I like I like the fact like the the first Star Wars film. Uh, Star Wars, not a new hope. Star Wars. <laughs> uh, that's like a fun, upbeat adventure movie in space sort of thing. Yeah. That like space opera, uh, and the second one just goes dark. Uh, takes a dark. Time. And and 
the, the rebels are just getting pummeled the whole way yeah. right to the very end and the third one's kind of just a mishmash of stuff it just lifts it again or sorry it's just a nothing movie really yeah. I like the Jabba the Hutt stuff it's that... more of a cinematic experience um, in the fa- uh, visually I would have made it so that um, have, have don't don't change any of the Jabba the Hutt scenes no even extend that more maybe put more into that sort no, of no 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 that, that's fine that's no? fine okay that's his uh, opening to the movie, but then after that, have the main chunk of the movie, the, the, the rebels up against the empire, button heads, and but the 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 rebels just get decimated, but when just, just by the skin of their teeth, yeah. but then Han Solo dies, I would have had Leia lose a leg or an eye yeah. or something, you know, <laughs> like Jane in Kingdom Death. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I don't know. Blow up C three PO's head. Ah, he's an annoying prick. Him. Yeah. I can't. I cannot. That character, I cannot stand. Like in the Star Wars universe, I could do without C three PO the whole time from start to finish. Yeah. He does take nothing. Him. Take him or leave him. R two, I'm fine with. Like, because all he does is bleep and bloop. Um, but yeah, but he's got a bit of sass about him as well. Yeah. Right? But no, just C three PO could do one. Um, he's like a golden butler. He's a golden bell end, is what he is. <laughs> <laughs> a massive tool. Um, but yeah, but uh, solo, I'm not looking forward to it at all. Um, the problem with solo is which problem? Right. Well, my problem is the trailer has pushed. Oh, look! There's this bit with Chewie hanging off the edge. He's about to get his head smashed. Will he? He won't. He? Well, no, he will because we bloody know he will because he's in six other movies. Six. What? Well, will he survive? Five. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. In fact, he's in more than that. As you know, he's in. He's in the. Is he not in the Clone Wars? Because he's there with uh, Yoda at the end. Yeah, but where is Solo set? Yeah, exactly. Surely that's, that's set a... after the Clone Wars. Or is it set? Or is it set before? But no, I can't be set yeah, before. Your timeline wise, it have to be after, wouldn't it? That's yeah. It. Where is it going to throw that in in the universe then? That's going to be interesting. But yeah, so it doesn't create that. Set. For me, there's going to be no real suspense of will Solo, will Lando, or will Chewie die because they're in the other movies. So you know what I mean? At least with something like Rebels, for instance. That the cartoon, every character in that, you were like, "Well, they won't. They will. They won't. They will. They won't." Even at the end, you were like, "I've only watched half of that." I've only I'm not watched, spoiling anything because uh, obviously I want to. Uh, up to the end of the second season. But because you've not, you've only the the only other reference to those characters is in Rogue One. There's been no further reference, so you knew two of the characters would always make it to Rogue One. Why well, do they reference him in Rogue One? They do. Um, over the tunnel, they shout General Sandula, General Sandula, and then you see Wee Chopper going Bloo, as he spins past. Mm. So yeah, they're in it. So obviously. That so yeah, I hadn't seen the cartoon at that yeah, point. Yeah, so one. But um, the rest of them, you don't know. So at I least just can't forgive them for CG bloody um, Peter Cushion. Oh, Moff Tarkin. Just can't. Really? I can't forgive that. That didn't stress me out too much. The See, I'm a huge Peter Cushion fan. CG Leia pissed me off. Like, she just looks stupid. I mean... Yeah, but that was, just, that was like a... They could, they could have got away with that because it was just like a little fun nod at the yeah. end like no disrespect to her like, but, but it was a major character like like yeah he is like and even in the story Moff Tarkin throughout that film is a major character he's the big dog and it doesn't even it, it's not him yeah it was a bit of, but yeah so yeah it so just doesn't it's, it's going to be visually outstanding and Donald Glover. That Donald Don, Glover. I can, uh, a, Donald Glover. I love Donald. That man's Glover. an artist. That man. That man should be given every award he can get his hands on. He's amazing. Right, but the fella that's playing uh, solo. Solo. What was his name? I don't know. I haven't a clue. Some dude. Do you want me to Google it? It's like Aaron Eckhart or something. No, uh, that's he's Two Face, isn't he? Who? Who plays Two Face? As in Harvey Two Face. Yeah. In what? In. Are we um, talking in Dark Knight? The Dark Knight. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I can't. Remember. I, I think it's it. Aaron Eckhart. Hey, let's see. Ron Howard. It's blah, something blah, blah, like blah. Lawrence Cadassian. Enric Alden. Enric Alden. That was close. Aaron. Re- ah, I'm not even pronouncing that. It's Aaron Ray. Yeah, him. Um. So yeah. Yeah. Carlson's in it though. Yeah, but he he doesn't look like Han Solo. He, look, he looks like a grumpy little shite. Yeah. <laughs> He looks like he looks like what Hayden Christensen was. Oh, to, don't even mention to Darth that Vader. <laughs> Plastic and mannequiny. Mannequin Skywalker. Mannequin Skywalker. Yeah, to quote Clark's too. Oh, what a reference! Um, but yeah, Woody Harrelson. I think Woody Harrelson and Donald Glover are going to steal the show. To be honest. Well, yeah, especially Donald Glover. That man I mean. is just like his new song. Uh, 
This is America, yeah. It's just like, ah, oh, so catchy. I'm fine. I'm going to put on my mouth here. Um, but yeah, so I, I left oh, up. Yeah, you're putting Rush on. After. Um, so yeah. So yeah, Solo's kind of me. But then you've got, after Solo, you've got Ant-Man and the Wasp, which is going to... That'd be cool. Well, you've not seen Avengers Infinity War yet, have you? No. So, um, they're not in Avengers Infinity War. That's not really a spoiler. I think not. I thought they were. No, no. Because what happens is, the way Ant-Man and Wasp is apparently going to be, is it's going to be before Infinity War, and the movie Ant-Man and Wasp is going to finish where you're in the middle of Infinity War. Alright. So it's kind of, it ties in because... timeline's a bit... A bit crossover. Yeah. Yeah, so, but yeah, so that's going to be interesting. And then... I think that's really it for the movies for the year so far that I'm, I'm aware that I'm jumping on top of. Um, obviously, you'll get your summer blockbusters drop in. Um, so we'll wait and see what comes. Other than that, TV-wise, movie-wise, um, not really watched much more movies than that. TV, I'm not, I think you. Uh, I've, uh, not really. Uh, oh, uh, I watched an episode of AP Bio. What the hell is that? Uh, it's a comedy program about uh, an ex-Harvard professor who gets a job in a high school teaching AP Bio, which is like uh, biology class, um, but he really doesn't want to be there, and then he ends up getting the kids just to do stuff for him. Oh, okay. Like, like to Entertain tra- trash, trash his, his, his rival who got his job at Harvard and oh, stuff. Okay. Like, it's, it's. I think I'm going to have to watch it, because the description seems a bit meh. It's uh, no, it's it's interesting. I, I, it was quite fun. Uh, I watched uh, an episode of Runaways. I have got that on my planner to watch. I've not watched uh, it Marvel yet. Runaways, which um, has cool. potential. Cool, cool. It's not going to be like um, Inhumans or what was the other one? The X Men one. Oh, there's an X Men one on side. Legion. No, Legion was good. Apparently, it's the. I like one. Legion. Oh, I can't remember. Basically, the X Men one that was two la- a lass and a girl got power. A lass and a guy got kid got powers. The dad's a, a mutant hunter, but but they're on the run. It didn't seem to go far. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. um, so yeah, but yeah, uh, that's really it so far. Yeah, uh, I went back and played uh, Batman Arkham Asylum because mm-hmm. I just love Batman. Yeah. Um, video games. Mm, I'm not so fussed with them. Or oh, that that the series from Rocksteady anyway. Yeah, yeah the three. Yeah, so. Um, I think yeah. that's us today. That's us for today. I think I think that will uh, wrap it up. Um, that's I'm episode two in the bag. Episode We've two in the bag. Got to go on. So what I've got to do? I've got to edit episode two. Got to do my KDM write ups. I've got to do an article about UK Games Expo. I've got to film some videos tomorrow. So it's going to be a busy old week before Saturday uh, for me. And I'll I'll try really hard to, to remember write the, to write that uh, article. An article about uh, my experience. If it's not written by we, time we go to UK Games Expo, UK Games Expo. Um, I'll find some way to annoy you and punish you. Oh, you man. do that anyway. Yeah. yeah, it's life. It's a fun part. So yes, yeah, so I guess we should go and um, wrap this up, open up the shop, and get board game club on the go. And see yeah. What we do. Get the kettle on. Yeah. Um, well, it's a. Uh, that's the end for me. And. And uh, that's it for me as well. So we'll say cheerio and see you next time. Goodbye. Thanks Bye. for listening. <laughs>